copper, it's more than just a pot. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the warning signs that you are deficient in copper and you are gonna have your eyes open as to how important copper is for pretty much your whole body. The skin, it is a window to what is going on internally and I'm gonna be going over the striking skin findings that can be identified in the setting of copper deficiency as well as key hair changes. Copper, it is a metal, it is very crucial to the function of a variety of different enzymes that carry out essential processes throughout our body. Well, copper is necessary for the function of an enzyme that cross-links collagen and elastin. It's also critical for that little enzyme that we're always talking about in my videos, tyrosinase. What does tyrosinase do? It creates melanin pigments, also vital for the enzymes that build the strong keratin bonds in your hair. Without copper, good luck building hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is how oxygen gets transported around in your blood. Copper is essential for healthy brain development and for the functioning of your nervous system. It plays a key role in balance of various hormonal systems. It plays a pivotal role in the metabolism of iron. Not to mention, copper is an essential cofactor for a variety of antioxidants in our body to even be able to function properly. So without copper, our body is very vulnerable to the damaging effects of oxidative stress. Copper deficiency is not super duper common, although, although it definitely can happen and you're going to want to keep watching to know, are you at risk for copper deficiency? Fortunately, copper can be found in a wide variety of foods. Chances are, if you are eating, you are getting more than adequate copper levels. Copper gets absorbed from foods in our small intestine. Our body is really good at making sure that we don't get copper deficient, and importantly, that we don't get too much copper. What should you be eating to make sure you are getting good amounts of copper? Honestly, pretty much anything that you want. Foods rich in copper include nuts, seeds, shellfish, organ meats, chocolate, um, but you can even get copper from tap water, beverages. If you are eating, you are getting in copper. Like it is not something that you should need to supplement for. And remember, if you give yourself too much copper, your body is gonna be like, we are full. The recommended dietary allowance, which is basically the amount that is sufficient to meet the needs of the vast majority of otherwise healthy individuals, those levels are established and they're gonna be dependent on your age and your gender. I'm filming this video on copper deficiency, but I have no idea why you're worried about copper deficiency. So who should we be worried about copper deficiency and who does it make sense to test, to monitor, and to recommend perhaps supplementation where appropriate. Celiac disease is a problem where you have inflammation in the gut as it relates to the consumption of gluten. Like people who have celiac disease cannot have anything with gluten in it. People with celiac disease can develop copper deficiency as well as a whole host of other nutritional deficiencies as it relates in the case of copper to malabsorption of copper in the small intestine because when the celiac disease is revved up, there's a lot of inflammation there the intestinal lining that gets in the way of absorption of that. According to the American College of Gastroenterology, fortunately, patients who have celiac disease, they have copper deficiency, they actually can get back to perfectly normal copper levels within about a month, provided they are on a strict gluten-free diet and that they have been given supplementation so their intestine can get healed so that they can absorb properly, provided, again, they have to be on that strict gluten-free diet because it's the gluten for those patients specifically that causes the inflammation that then leads to them being unable to absorb copper properly. Number two is bariatric surgery, weight loss surgery. There are case reports of patients who develop copper deficiency after having weight loss surgery. When patients undergo weight loss surgery, they should have counseling for their nutritional needs because they're going to likely need to take supplements um, given that they are at risk for malabsorption. So that is definitely something that if not accounted for, if you're wondering, I've had weight loss surgery, should I be supplementing with this? Reach out to your team of doctors so they can advise you on what you should do. The other situation is patients who are in the hospital have to be placed on something called total parenteral nutrition, TPN. Um, this is basically um, to provide them nutrition. And if the TPN does not have the appropriate amount of copper, they are at risk. 
Um, so that is something that a registered dietitian who works in the hospital, who manages the nutritional needs of patients um, in, in, on TPN, you know, they would need to be accounting for that. I have a lot of videos on my channel of skin signs, warning signs of various nutritional deficiencies. The theme in pretty much all of those videos is a group that is at risk for many nutrient deficiencies are patients who struggle with alcohol use disorder, alcoholism, because alcohol severely impairs absorption of nutrients from food. And unfortunately, a lot of patients who find themselves um, very dependent on alcohol, they end up not eating. Here's a situation where I think many of you out there watching could actually be at risk and not even realize it. And that is if you are taking high doses of zinc supplementation on a regular basis, that actually can mess up absorption of copper. High, you know, excessive zinc consumption from supplements can get in the way of copper absorption and lead to a copper deficiency. Copper deficiency has occurred taking as little as, well, I say as little, it's still a lot, um, 60 milligrams of zinc per day for 10 weeks. So you don't have to necessarily be taking vats and vats and vats of supplemental zinc for it to interfere with copper absorption. I know it's really popular, you know, people want to pursue, say, zinc supplementation for acne um, or for hydradenitis superativa, and you do need to be careful there. Um, while there is some evidence for zinc supplementation in these conditions, not robust, but it does exist, um, you do want to be careful that you are not um, overdoing it and putting yourself at risk for copper deficiency. But nothing illustrates the skin, the hair, the total body system manifestations of copper deficiency like the genetic condition Menke's disease. This is a hereditary condition where the patients are born with an abnormal copper transporter so they don't absorb it in the intestine. They have very pale skin and they have these saggy cheeks. They also have what's called a cupid's bow upper lip, just very characteristic facial features. When you look at their hair, it's very sparse. It kind of has this wiry appearance to it and it is often light colored. It is very brittle, it breaks. And if you look carefully at it, it has this characteristic appearance called called pili torti, basically a helical structure. And all of that relates to the fact that copper is so dang important for building the hair. And so when you don't have copper, well, this is, this is the result on the hair. These babies have what's called failure to thrive. They have poor cognitive development. They develop seizures. If you look at the blood vessels in their brain, they're dilated, they're tortuous, they're abnormal, and they're not super functional. Why? Copper is essential for building healthy collagen. And we're all thinking about collagen for wrinkles, but collagen is vital for your blood vessels to function properly. So they have a problem there. And as a result, they have poor oxygenation to the brain. Collagen is really important in building your bones. They have weak bones, pale skin that has this doughy texture to it. And these patients often have hypothermia because they don't have the copper to man the enzyme that helps with body temperature regulation. Sadly, these babies don't live very long. They usually have a life expectancy of about three years. So that's a genetic condition where we're seeing like kind of the most extreme versions of copper deficiency affecting multiple organ systems. But what about, say, for example, someone who's been taking high dose zinc or someone who had weight loss surgery um, or somebody who struggled with alcoholism? Like, what are the typical signs and symptoms in, in an adult who develops copper deficiency? Well, you can develop very pale skin. When adults develop copper deficiency, usually the findings include anemia. So the red blood cell count goes down as well as neutropenia. Neutropenia is the white blood cells going down guess what? That puts you at risk for infections. And copper is really important for a variety of enzymes in the immune system. So you, you, you know, you're a lot more vulnerable to infection. They look at your bone marrow. They're going to find something called ringed sideroblasts. And basically what these are, are cells in which the mitochondria are stuffed with iron. Why? Well, without copper, that iron cannot get out of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm of the cell where it's needed to make hemoglobin. So your body is like aggressively trying to hold on to iron, but it can't get it out. 
it can't get it out of the store. And because copper is so important for the health of your nervous system, copper deficient patients will develop what's called a peripheral neuropathy um, in the lower extremities, so the lower legs, the feet, difficulty walking, that feeling of numbness, tingling, kind of a pins and needles sensation, episodes of feeling like the feet are burning, very painful and uncomfortable. Because copper is so important for pigment production, um, the skin becomes very pale and you can have premature graying of the hair. Copper is also vital for metabolism and so you can actually end up with abnormal lipid levels, high cholesterol as it relates to copper deficiency. Copper is so important for various antioxidant systems to function properly and so that as a result leaves the little nerves vulnerable to oxidative stress. They undergo what's called demyelination. Myelin is like this insulation around your nerves. When that myelin breaks down, you don't have that. The message, the, the conduction is abnormal. And so then you get um, peripheral neuropathy. Also, patients with copper deficiency can go on to develop osteoporosis as well. But like I said at the beginning of the video, the vast majority of you guys are not deficient in copper. Like, and I'm saying that because I know that there is a lot of like push in the supplement wellness industry to take a copper supplement, but what for? Um, if you're not deficient in copper, there is absolutely no evidence that supplementing with copper is going to have any sort of positive effect on your health. And you have to be careful because you can have too much of a good thing. Now that's uncommon because again, your body's pretty good at um, regulating copper homeostasis, but um, there have actually been reports of patients developing copper toxicity from drinking water that had been um, sort of uh, stagnant in copper containing pipes and the copper leached into the water supply to such an extent that they ended up getting um, copper overload. All right, y'all, that is a wrap up regarding the signs of copper deficiency. I really hope this video was informative, educational. Like I said, I have a ton of videos on my channel all about warning signs of various health conditions, nutrient deficiencies, how the skin gives us a clue, and they are all saved in a playlist, warning signs of health not to miss, which I am going to link in the description box so you can check those out if you wanna learn more about the skin signs of various health problems. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.